Hey guys, it's Crowbar Zero, and welcome. Today I'm gonna to be going over queen farming, but specifically uh, for about version uh, 25. And this is for mostly like the the newer players to maybe about the the mid game or so. Pretty much anything before you get access to ultimate weapon plus, which is basically you have every single ultimate weapon. Um, to go into this, uh. You know, there's there's lots of strategies i've been helping some people out for, through various builds and so i kind of compiled a bunch of what i've been sharing with other people through like dms who have been like hey can you help me with my build and trying to get it here also i didn't include uh anything talking about coinbot obviously if you're able to sync coinbot to your build uh that's ideal you don't have to worry too much if you get to the point of like you've got 100% uptime. You just kind of want CoinBot to its best. But um, if you're going through this, you know, the mid to early game, maybe you don't have a lot of stones. If you're able to sing CoinBot, perfect. But um, I'm just going to leave it out for the, the remainder of the discussion, even though it is very important. I'm just going to kind of assume that most people are may not even be able to invest much if anything at all into that but anyway going into it so the there's several kind of variations i'm going to talk about uh i would say over all three in this video i kind of have it laid out here one is going to be coin farming without uh smart misses um and without g comp and then another one with g comp and then coin farming with uh smart misses so the, the, the key main ultimate weapons that we're looking at or overall for the econ aspect of it is GT, Black Hole, and Deathwing. Now I'm leaving out um, Spotlight specifically because yes, it can give up to a three times bonus, but that is assuming like you've got 100% coverage. That's a huge st uh, stone cost. So I'm also leaving that out of this discussion just because it's such a huge cost. Now, if you have it, you know, rock the coin bonus, awesome. Um, but I'm also leaving that one out as far as this goes. So we're going to go into it, and I would say overall, if you're new, right in this stage of the game, I would say GT, Black Hole, Death Wave, and then Smart Missiles would be kind of the... The first four ultimate weapons I would suggest, and we'll go into more detail in this build. So the first one, you know, you've got GT, Black Hole, Death Wave. You're gonna want to get those cooldowns synced up. Um, and uh, let's see here. I'm trying to remember everything for this one. Oh yeah, yeah. You can use a uh, multiverse nexus. Uh, that can help. Uh, especially if you're newer you might not be able to synchronize everything up so that could be an option that you could use uh, most, but most people that i've been talking to about this point you know maybe they'll have epic uh multiverse nexus and maybe the the cooldowns are all over the place so so it's it's kind of a switch where it's like even at epic it's going to synchronize everything and you're going to get a good bonus, but you're still going to want to probably work towards synchronize every, everything. Um, just because you've got that uh, cooldown penalty as a result of using multiverse nexus. Um, and usually I would say you could probably get it earlier than actually trying to get multiverse nexus up to like... Um, mythic or ancestral so anyway going into it you know the labs that you're going to want obviously the coin labs uh cell labs are specific to death wave uh, gt duration and black hole damage so and i'm going to talk about the the other part of black hole damage it maxes at two percent so the idea of this build is you're going to hoard enemies when everything goes off you're going to have a set duration so one of the builds that i was looking at let's say their their gt was 
20 seconds and with the perk their black hole uptime is maybe like 40 seconds so that person would probably want to bring up their gt regeneration i would say probably the easiest would be through labs um you want that that uptime so you you hoard enemies they get sucked into black hole they get marked really early on and then your whole goal is while black hole is up during that duration you're gonna want to kill all those enemies that you just marked and gt is active and all that stuff so if somebody had let's say a total of we'll say 30 seconds of black hole gt uptime and everything goes off so you with two percent uh per second you're probably looking at black hole itself doing about 60 percent of the damage and then whatever damage that you do is just going to fill in the rest. Uh, so to be able to hoard enemies, you're going to want to devolve your stats or devo. Or basically reduce your stats to pretty minimal. Um, so in the attack um, tab, we're going to be setting attack speed at minimal. Critical chance at minimal. Range multi-shot you know all the the chance stuff except for super crit super crit you can just kind of leave it alone super crit is dependent on you actually critting it in the first place so if you have no crit chance then you're not going to super crit so just basically trying to get your kills per second and your attacks per second as minimal as possible that's important because you want those enemies to cluster around your tower you just want a bunch of just this big horde of enemies clustering and then when everything goes off, then you can, you're really focused on like, okay, I want to kill enemies at this point. The thorns damage on defense, I would say about 1% because they're going to be doing a little bit of damage. Maybe you'll be able to kill a few enemies with the, the thorns. But uh, the big part of thorns is you want to, them to accrue a little bit of damage, but not so much damage that you're just completely, you know, wiping out the ability to actually horn enemies on your tower. Now, as you progress uh, through the waves, you might want to increase this a little bit. Kind of play around, you know, depending on where you're at, what tier you're farming. Uh, I would say just kind of wing it by ear, see how, how it performs uh, at any particular stage. And that's really dependent on your account. So I think uh, what percent is a good starting point? And then once you figure out, okay, this is going to be optimal for me, you know, you can raise it up to that. Um, Knockback chance, orbs, shockwave size, you want to keep minimal. Same with uh, landmine chance, you don't want landmines uh, sniping your kills. Uh, yeah, and with the, the knockback related stuff, uh, you want them kind of close to your tower. Maybe, maybe you would want to knock back a little bit farther. Um, it's not a huge problem. But you don't want to, uh, you want the enemies fairly close. Uh, utility, you're going to keep all three of your free ups, your attack free ups, your um, defense, and your utility free ups at zero. You don't want random bonuses going to all of these things that you've devolved. So you're going to want to keep those minimal. Uh, so yeah. Going into the second build, this is assuming that you do have G-Comp uh, or a Galaxy Compressor. Uh, basically, the cooldowns on everything are going to be a lot more frequent. Um, if you're able to get to the point where you've got maybe nearly 100% uptime, I would say maybe you can you know, just keep the you know your normal attacks per second. Um, you can increase those stats, but uh, that, that's assuming that you're kind of getting closer to that like 100% uptime uh, with uh, GCOMP. Now, if you don't have 100% uptime, you still might want to hoard. Um, that's going to be really dependent on you know you and your uh, setup. Also, when you're getting closer to 100% uptime, uh, DW uh, or death wave quantity is going to be really important. Uh, basically. It's, it's effectively like extra duration. So if you do have like 100% uptime, um, 
with everything else that just basically yeah hopefully that makes sense <laughs> each quantity is equivalent to like four seconds you're you're marking new enemies and that maxes out um with the ancestral substat at uh plus nine also including the the perk so yeah um and and that vert method, you're not hoarding as much. You're just killing his enemies constantly. Um, let's grab my gems here. Um, so you know, obviously the the first one they talked about, like uh, it's not showing my mouse. So top left, hoarding. If you've got G comp and you've got closer to 100% uptime, um, you're not really hoarding as much. And then going over to the third build, this one you're also hoarding, but with smart missiles. So with uh, this particular setup, you're going to want smart missiles to also go off when everything else goes off. So you're hoarding enemies, everything goes off, and big boom, all the enemies die. Makes it a lot easier. You don't have to worry about duration um, like you would with uh, the other two build, other two builds. It's a lot simpler. You just fire it off and things die. Um, probably overall, like, and why I recommend smart missiles, because it's probably going to be cheaper stone cost than investing into a bunch of duration upgrades. You know, down the line, yes, you are going to want to get all of those things, but for early on, kind of the best return on your investment appeal, uh, this is what I think is probably the ideal encounter. So initially, uh, smart missiles, when you first get it, the cooldown is going to be every three minutes. So on all the other uh, cooldowns, you want it to be about three minutes. Uh, and I actually f completely forgot to check what the, the starting point on a uh, black hole. So I'm just going to do that really quick here. I'm an idiot. <laughs> um... Okay, so black hole cooldown is 200 seconds versus smart missiles, that's 180. So yeah, the the lowest starting cooldown is going to be with smart missiles. Um, so yeah, try to get everything down to about 3 minutes, get smart missiles, and then you can invest in you know, quantity and damage for smart missiles. Uh, one of the labs is uh, smart missile explosion. So if you get that and you increase the radius, then you're going to have a big AOE component. So if everyone's all nice and close and clustered around your tower, boom, all these missiles are just going to obliterate everything near you. Uh, you do not want a multiverse nexus when you're doing this. And the reason for that is multiverse nexus is going to affect the cooldowns and average between GT, Death Wave, and uh, Black Hole. Sorry, Golden Tower. Um, but it's not going to change the cooldown for smart missiles. So that's where I kind of screw up this whole timing that we're trying to get. Um, pr pretty similar, you know, as, as I mentioned before, as far as the devolve stats, just going to keep those down. Um, and then you're going to add your damage cards, uh, to the build as you kind of need. You'll probably find out, like, oh, okay, at this point it looks like I'm starting to struggle with uh, actually killing all the enemies that uh, I need with smart missiles. You can add those in. This will probably get you a little bit farther into the build, or farther into the run, I would believe, than uh, the other ones as far as being able to actually kill when everything goes off. So, yeah, smart missiles, really, really good. Um, in all the cases, like if you have things like uh, Chain Lightning, Poison Swamp, uh, Spotlight Missiles, you're going to want to turn those off because they're going to be just going off whenever they go off. And you don't want those or orbs or landmines, you know, basically sniping up those kills. Anyway, I hope you guys found that useful. And wow, um, video under 15 uh, minutes. All right. <laughs> Uh, I will catch you guys later. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.